Does anybody know what this is? Some people know this as coxcomb. It's also a type of amaranth. And as the head grows out, the first blooms at the base. Produce the seeds. And so this is seeds right here. Sometimes you see it in smaller heads, um, about four inches wide, but when they're really happy, and they grow this big, and as the flower falls away at the base, the bloom was about this big, and it actually kept growing, and the reason why it's wrapped around is because it had to stretch to fit all these little ripples that look like grain coral and it pushed its way out and then as we see here these are seeds they're not very big so um even though they're edible and they would take an awful lot uh, to make any food. So most people grow this because of the colored head. And you can dry them and they will stay alive. Or not live, I should say. They should stay their color. And they make nice arrangements. And other people like them because they're in the amaranth family uh, which is an edible seed but uh, there's other amaranths that get bigger seed or uh, even sweet sorghum you get a type of sugar cane as well as seed and you get a lot more back uh, in planting those you don't need many rows of those to get seed back that you can eat yourself if you had to and feed your chickens. So, uh, if need be, this would be a nice source and it has some protein in it. So, it is edible, but it's also nice color too. But as it got to the top and it dried, let's see this. There's not really any seeds when it gets up to this far. It's a nice and red color, but uh, it's not producing seeds anymore. And this plant was uh, a couple feet tall. And I've seen these in the garden where they, they were less than a foot, foot and a half with uh, a comb on the top. But uh, the stem on this went a little bit longer and it was broke off at that point. So, uh, if you happen to see this in a garden, and it's not yours, or it is in your garden, and you bought the plants and planted them, um, here's the seeds to save. And you can grow more instead of paying four fifty for a seed pack that has maybe 20, 25, 30 of these little dots. And look at that. One plant will give you several hundred, if not more. And then what I do is little seeds like this, I try to put, you know, anywhere from, depending on how many I have, yeah, at least 25, if not 50. 75 or a big pinch of seeds um, 
and make up envelopes ahead of time for trading and imagine what it would be like say like if you wanted to trade this for a package of corn seeds or say it was uh, morning glory seeds or whatever um, it all depends on what value you put on them and what the other person you're trading with puts on the seed so and another thing is uh, here we got what's called the little light brown stuff that the seed is falling out of. We call that the chaff. And if you do it in a box just right, you can usually take a piece of paper and, and get the chaff to blow out. But if you blow on it and you're doing it a little too slightly too hard, your seeds are all going to disappear. Or what I do if I'm watching a program... And the commercial comes on, or they're at a piece of the of the program where um, I don't need to watch it as intently without not losing a show. Then what I do is I sit there and I bring them apart and I slowly move the seeds into a little group with my finger and just gradually do it. And I'm doing this while I'm enjoying my program or whatever just like if you're knitting and you watch tv so it's possible to do that some people go oh your time is money and you can't do this and that and in the meantime people out there have been saving seeds for years and this is how they did it they didn't have some special machine that vacuumed them up and separated them for them and put them in little packets and if that's your mindset you're not going to get ahead but a lot of people will pay money for a gym membership or four fifty for a coffee or even six seven dollars for a cup of coffee and uh, they go to the store and they try to buy seeds and they go oh my gosh it used to be 50 cents a dollar 50 a packet at the most and now they're horrendous what am I going to do? And my answer is take some time. And don't look at it like, oh, look at all these seeds. I don't have time. Make time. Because mindfulness is very important to the brain. While I'm separating my seeds, I'm thinking about things that I thought about getting done, but I didn't because there was something blocking it. Like, uh... I have to ask somebody first before I can start a certain project. Or a uh, person asked me to do something, but they quite can't meet my price. Is there some way I can negotiate that better? I think about things like that while I'm quietly doing my seeds. Instead of going into a rant or getting into a tizzy or avoiding. I just, this is like a mindful activity. And just like some people uh, use combs or tactile and just enjoy the moment uh that's what i'm doing enjoy it if you're sitting there thinking oh my god look at how long it's taking me and how much money it would cost if, if i paid somebody to do it it's cheaper to just buy the seeds i don't care what they cost i'm gonna buy them the problem with that is you only have so much money and if your mentality said just buy it whatever the price um, what happens is when you show up and you're willing to do that, then the person selling the seeds goes, oh, he was willing to pay six bucks for a packet. Just like buying eggs. If somebody's willing to pay four fifty, there's got to be somebody that's willing to pay six. And so now at the market, they have the four dollar eggs. They don't have dollar forty nine eggs anymore. And, uh, then the rest of the eggs are go all the way up to like twelve dollars, and so of course the the four dollar eggs go first, and then the uh, four fifty eggs go, and then a few of the six dollar eggs go, and then the rest of the people they decide to either go without, or they'll buy a carton of eggs and they don't even look at the price; they'll just buy it put it on the counter and buy their loaf of bread and just deal with it 
And when their pocket runs out of money, they stop buying stuff. And then they eat peanut butter and jelly or macaronis or whatever they, they can get. And they settle. And my personal opinion is um, I wouldn't settle. Um, find a better idea. Because when everybody needs eggs and they're willing, and some are willing to pay anything for them, uh, why sell eggs at two dollars a carton and sell them all, or three dollars a carton and sell them all, when uh, you can get four dollars uh, for half of them, and then if you have to throw the other half out and destroy them, because of course we're not going to share. You know, people aren't going to buy eggs if you're going to give them away. Uh, mentality um, that's better some people believe um, I've known people tell me that they had a favorite store they went to and the store was getting more and more expensive and finally it was going to go out of business and when the owner decided he's going to go out of business he started selling stuff for 50% off which was still more than what he paid for the items. But he's thinking, oh, well, I gotta pay my employee, and I gotta, I gotta pay for this and the other thing, and, and mark up. Well, when he marked the stuff down to 50%, and all of a sudden people started buying the things, he was like, oh, the very idea. So, he let it run, and he was planning on going out of business at the end of the month, and guess what? He made enough money that he could keep going for a little while longer. So he changed his way of thinking. So instead of taking items that he paid maybe five bucks for and selling them for 15, he decided to sell them for maybe 10. And more people were showing up and buying additional little extra things. But when the bandwagon starts and everybody says, oh, well, look at this, I can get this much money for something, or so-and-so is getting that much money for something, I should too. But if you're throwing away a lot of it, that's not good. And uh, if you're worried about somebody down the street having a better tractor than you, and you need to raise your prices so you can get a better tractor, and uh, then that's another issue. So, and same with a car. Do we all need to drive brand new cars? You know? Mm. Brand new cars don't even work as well as the old ones used to work. So, um, back to seeds. Save your seeds. Um, they're not always in a place where you think they might be. A lot of people would look in here and go, hmm, there's no seeds. I don't see no seeds in there when they're down here. So everything has its own way of making seeds. And it's up to you to find out where. You have a great day.